Welcome to the Art of Authority podcast, bringing you interviews and episodes to help you radically optimize your authority and influence to become the go-to expert in your field. Here's your host, Authority Positioning Coach, Mike Saunders. Hey guys, Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach here. Hey, I'm bringing you this talk because it really came up recently in a couple conversations and I thought it might help you out as well. Have you ever heard of the imposter syndrome? It kind of is like the fake it till you make it concept. Well, so many times in business as entrepreneurs or speakers or coaches or consultants, um, we feel like you know, I know me. I grew up with me. I'm, I live with me every day. And for me to feel this or say this and say that I'm an expert in or I'm an authority on this topic of, I don't know. I, I don't have 30 years of experience. I'm not on CNN and I don't have a New York Times bestseller. So I, maybe I'm just kind of an imposter. But here's what I want you to keep in mind. Sometimes what you do know is two to three steps beyond what where your current target audience is. And you can be real and you can be authentic and you can be transparent in what you do know about your um, um, area of expertise. Because if your area of expertise is tied in so tightly with what your target audience is dealing with and they have a pr certain problem that you have a solution to, and your area of expertise is able to help them through that, whatever that is, a product or service, now you're not an imposter. Now you have that, that extra uh, level of experience that maybe you solved it. You know, maybe you lost 20 pounds, gained 20 pounds, and you can uh, walk someone through that process. Maybe in business, you made 20,000, lost 20,000, and you can teach someone the lessons you learned through that. And you don't need to have made, you know, let's add a few zeros, made 20 million, lost 20 million. You don't need to be at that level. You know, you might feel like, well, I'm an imposter if I haven't made 20 million and trying to teach my audience how to do the same. You don't need to. So what I want to encourage you with here today with this message is don't feel like when you are positioning yourself as that credible authority or expert in your field, your, your area of expertise, you don't need to have massive um, success in that. You're working toward that, but you have more success than your target audience does. And you're speaking from the heart and you have some practical, tactical ways that they're implementing, that they can be implementing what you are teaching them through. You're guiding them through that process, right? So when you become that educator and that advocate for your target audience to help them to solve that certain problem that they have, and don't be all things to all people, right? So really fine tune it, dial it in when you can do that. Now you're not an imposter. Well, guess what then happens after this step? So this step is now you're past that feeling of I'm an imposter. Now you start working with a few people and they start getting some results. It doesn't have to be spectacular results. It doesn't have to be, you know, unbelievable mega millions of results. It could be more results and more success than they've had in the past 30 days. And when they start giving you that feedback, guess what happens? It validates what you're saying. And also it allows you to fine tune to, to improve upon that as well. But when that happens, your belief in your own process, your belief in your self-confidence, you know, you, you kind of sit up a little more tall, you walk a little more, more confident and you speak a little bit more um, authoritative, right? You never walk in a room and say, Park, I am an authority and expert in this. You must listen to me. No, but when you do interact with people, you come at that interaction, phone call, email, webinar, you know, personal interaction, it doesn't matter. You come at that from the um, feeling of wanting to help them and serve and be that educator and advocate for them. But you come at it from that confidence that, hey, what I've done in the past will work for you. Let me tell you this one uh, uh, case study. So let me tell you this example. I had a client um, literally this past week email me back and say, you know, this third party social proof that we're able to be getting uh, with this system that I'm helping them to get from their uh, client base. It is so rewarding because sometimes, you know, we feel like, am I really making a difference? And, you know, your, your clients wave and high five you or, or email you and say, thank you so much. And, and that's surface level. But sometimes you think, am I really making a difference? But when these reviews start coming in, this uh, client had emailed me and said, I just feel validated. I feel so excited. And it's, it's so wonderful to get that validation. So what will happen with you is when you start getting those results for your clients, and even if it's preliminary feedback, it starts giving you that belief and that confidence so that you can continue to deliver and continue to deliver. So 
I want that to remain in the forefront of your mind as you begin and continue to build your authority and your authority positioning assets. Because remember, building your authority is your number one priority. And until next time, make it a great day. You've been listening to the Art of Authority podcast. Are you interested in building your authority positioning as the number one strategy to grow your business, brand, and influence? Book your authority audit today. The seven-point audit of your current authority position will uncover opportunities and show you how to be seen as a leading expert and authority your industry looks to for advice. Visit www.authoritypositioningcoach.com.